I waited five months for this camera. After the continual hype of the Fujifilm X100V, I succumbed to the influence of social media and came to the conclusion that I needed this camera. But finding myself on the latter half of that hype, it was basically impossible to find an X100V for anything resembling a reasonable price. So when Fuji announced the X106, jumped on the bandwagon and ordered it on launch day, February 20th, 2024, just I don't know, four hours after it launched, and it took almost five months for it to come. I had this camera for just over a week and thought I would make a video on my first impressions of this highly desired compact camera. So to start off, I think it's important to talk about why I wanted this camera to begin with and what I expected to get out of it. I feel like the biggest thing for me easily was the size and the form factor of the camera. I've been shooting exclusively on Sony systems for around five years. And I mean, I love the cameras, but when it comes to what I enjoy shooting creatively, it's just too big, it's too cumbersome, and I just, I wanted something that was easy to carry around, didn't draw a lot of attention, and it was just a good everyday carry. The second reason would definitely be the film recipes, um, or film simulations, I think, that's a huge selling point. And in my brain, I'm thinking, cool, it'll save me some, some time from having to edit. So those are the two main reasons, which I'm sure are the main reasons that anybody is looking to get an X100V or X106. The last reason for me was it's fixed 23 millimeter lens and keyword is fixed because I knew if I was gonna buy into another camera system that not only would I be tempted I would buy other lenses for it. So just a nice little financial safety net for me. Can't, can't buy lenses if I can't change them out. Pro number one for me is the size. Exceeded expectations, super compact. Honestly, what they're able to fit into such a compact uh, form factor I'd say it's pretty pretty dang impressive. Not only is it easy to carry around with you anywhere you go, we right off the bat notice that it just draws so much less attention than carrying around like my a7 III with a 1635. And when you're shooting street photography, you don't really want people to notice you before you notice them. The second pro on the list is definitely the IBIS. Not much to say about it, except it is it just does what it's supposed to do. I mean, I didn't have crazy expectations for it, but I even popped some shots off of the New York City skyline at night, handheld with my shutter speed at like half a second, and it came out pretty dang good for a handheld shot. And I do not have the steadiest hands. I can't notice any handshake whatsoever in this photo. Pro 3, image quality. I feel like, especially when you're first starting out photography and you're watching all these videos, trying to learn as much as you possibly can, full frame is just shoved down your throat. I mean, it's like full frame is where to go, it's the best quality, it's the best bang for your buck, whatever the reasons are. But this is my first crop sensor camera in 
five years and honestly really blown away like the first time i took a photo with it and zoomed in on the shot like just in camera super impressed with the level of detail or like how much you can crop in on a photo without much loss of quality so it's more than enough for social media posts or i mean i could probably print the same size images from the Fuji X106 as I could from my Sony a7 III. So if printing decently sized images or anything like that is deterring you from buying that camera, I, I wouldn't even worry about it. The first downside I noticed about this camera was definitely the processing. I know they say they updated the processor in this camera as opposed to the X100V, but I did notice when I first started shooting on this, I was shooting with just 128 gig SD card, 280 megabytes a second read speed, and 210 megabytes write speed on this card. And I actually didn't think it was that bad uh, with that SD card, but when I went to New York with it, I actually switched the SD card out uh, just because I had it empty and I didn't feel like formatting the other one yet. But this card is 95 uh, 95 megabytes a second and like it significantly changed the processing speed of the camera and i've used that card for my sony countless times you know and it, it never had any issues with uh with read or write speed not that it's terrible i would just say make sure you're buying faster cards so that you don't run into that problem when you're out shooting if you're trying to like play back anything and see it quick you're gonna want a faster card. Otherwise you're gonna wait. It's not that bad. Like just, you can be patient, but I'm not. So faster, faster cards. I'd say the other drawback of the Fuji X106 is probably the autofocus. Now granted, I'm coming from Sony, who's known for like their fantastic autofocus capabilities. Uh, so kind of spoiled. I'm kind of spoiled when it comes to that. Um, and I'm not saying that the autofocus isn't, it's still good. It's still good. It's just not what I'm used to. And it's definitely f forcing me to slow down when I'm out on the street shooting and be a little more proactive when I'm shooting. Otherwise I'll miss some shots, which I've done. Uh, cause I'm not like, I'm not lining shots up quick enough or proactively enough, I should say to where the camera has time to autofocus. So again, not that it's terrible, but just something to keep in mind if you're used to, especially Sony, don't expect this to have the best autofocus in the world. I'd say the last con that I can think of, and again, it's not a deal breaker, is just the battery life. But I'd say for the size of these batteries, it's really not that bad. Um, I took four batteries to New York with me. I shot the entire day and I think I only actually used two of them. So, I mean, it's not the greatest. If you're keeping your camera on all day long and like depending on how many photos you are shooting, that's gonna change how quickly you run through the battery. But I'd say for the most part, you could get away with two to three batteries and you'd be good to go. Do I wish the battery life lasted a little longer? Yes, but again, not a deal breaker. Last thing I wanna talk about. I didn't necessarily include this in the pros or the cons of this video because I think it's a little more subjective and I also, again, have only had this camera for a week and a half. So that's film recipes. The film recipes was one of the things that I was probably most excited for when it came to this camera. Um, I enjoy editing, but when it comes to like my own stuff, I kind of want to spend as little time editing as possible. And honestly, just because of that, I do tend to edit in black and white fairly often. And I think it's just for the simplicity of the edits. I'm not worried about colors. Sometimes they can be distracting. Not only distracting, I just overthink the edits when color is involved. So I'll just I'll edit black and white a lot of the time. So my hopes for this camera were to be cool. Create some recipes, uh, shoot in J JPEG plus raw. So I have the option to edit if I want, but hopefully I won't have to. And 
so far. I don't know if it's just the recipes I'm coming across or creating, but it's just not what I expected. I feel like people talk about that online a lot as like a huge selling point for this camera, but I don't think they give the full scope of these Fujifilm recipes and how they interact with different lighting and things like that. I mean, if you're in just the perfect lighting scenario with the perfect recipe, probably gonna get a great photo. But from what I've noticed is not all of these film recipes are created equal. If you're hoping to get this camera and just have a camera that you can just take photos and they're gonna look great straight out of camera every time, I would lower your expectations. You're gonna have to use very specific recipes in very specific scenarios. And it's not a, it's not a deal breaker for me either. And again, maybe I just need to mess with the recipes a little more and find one that's maybe a little more neutral that works in a larger range of uh, scenes, but when it comes to the recipes at the moment, I'm, I'm just not super impressed. And I also don't know if that just has to do with like, I don't have as much control as I would like. Uh, so usually I just tend to shoot in a black and white recipe, have a raw just in case, but again, not a deal breaker. And I don't know how many times I said deal breaker during this. All in all, I am happy with my purchase. It's a fun camera. Is it everything I hoped it would be? No. Did it exceed my expectations in some respects? Yes. I'd say in all, if you're looking for a, if you're looking for a camera that is compact, pretty damn good quality, helps you edit a little bit less, can shoot decent video, and allows you, I feel like to just live in the moment a little more while also still having a good camera around your neck. I'd say it's definitely worth the purchase. Is it worth the price? I feel like that's up to the individual to decide. At this point, it's just your decision if you want to wait several months for this camera because of how popular it is. Like I ordered it four hours after launch and it took five months to get here. Anyway, not a super in-depth review. Just a couple quick points I wanted to hit. Show some photos I got with the camera so far. And I don't know, maybe help settle some of the hype surrounding this camera and maybe help people make a more rational decision with their purchases. That's it for this video. I got a lot of interaction on my last video and that was really cool to see. So thank you guys for that. Uh, this video is not like the last video I made whatsoever. It's kind of just me talking about a camera. Um, I feel like my channel is kind of all over the place. So anybody that's subscribed to me, good luck figuring out what I'm going to post because I don't even know what I'm going to post most of the time. Just kind of roll with the punches and I'm just posting whatever I find interesting at the time or whatever I might be going through or thinking of. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe even. That'd be cool. Maybe, perhaps, who knows? See you in the next one.